Hey guys, welcome to episode seven of the Daily Diesel Show. Uh, I apologize that I wasn't here yesterday. I um, it got late. My usual schedule consists of you know getting up in the morning, working till around six. I spend about three three and a half hours with my family, get the kids down for bed in the evenings, uh, and then I go back to working on projects until you know one two in the morning. Usually that's that's a normal day. Well, yesterday I didn't get done with my normal projects until like one. And, uh, and then frankly, I just didn't feel like recording. It was going to, you know, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to record and upload. And there's not really time to, uh, like we're not editing or anything. So there's not time to like send them off to, uh, to our marketing lady to get everything uploaded. So anyway, I just didn't feel like it. That's the answer. Um, so sorry for that. Uh, and then today I'm actually gonna do something different. I, Thursdays tend to be like one of the worst days for almost everyone. You know, it's like, it's like the, it's like the great wall of China blocking you from the duet of beautiful bliss that is the weekends. And so I'm going to spend, uh, like 10 minutes or so here, uh, reading a story, which is a hilarious story. Uh, I think anyway, it's a hilarious story and, um, and we can all take a laugh and then tomorrow we'll get back and in, get back into diesel stuff. Uh, tomorrow I'm actually probably going to be covering like the basic, like the first parts to choose uh, when wanting to build a power stroke. Uh, and I think that's going to be a good subject to cover. Um, but this story is actually written by my brother. Um, uh, he, 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 he's a man's man for sure. Um, and, uh, and he's quite funny, but he owns a uh, gravel boss, which is like, basically he took the issue of like trying to call around to pits and then, you know, uh, gravel haulers. I don't know what that's called. Um, and, uh, and he helps, uh, people by like, he built a website, made it so you can just like go online. Uh, you can choose whatever type of like gravel or sand or topsoil or whatever it is you're looking for. Um, you can get your quote there, order it online. And then he coordinates like the best place to get it from and all that and delivers it to you. It's a pretty cool service. Like it's not something that really existed. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, that's just in Alaska. Uh, and then like he's working in the Pacific Northwest. So it's in Washington and uh, Idaho right now. And I think he's working on like getting into Montana and Oregon and stuff and maybe working further south from there. Uh, but it's a cool service. That's not a, that's not a plug in that I'm getting paid for it. It's just a neat thing. And to give you sort of a background on um, like, he's a very, he's very like, he's, he's a man's man, you know, uh, very much so. Um, certainly more masculine than I am. Uh, but this is a story he wrote and, uh, and it's, it's, um, it's pretty good. Um, and it's, uh, it's called becoming a cowboy. And so today I'm just going to read this and, uh, and then hopefully we all have a laugh. If you guys don't appreciate it, uh, if you think this is stupid and you want me to never do this again, let me know that. Um, maybe nicely in the comments. And if you think it's funny and you want me to maybe do like a, a you know, like a funny Thursdays, um, then we can do that too. And we can do storytelling or something that's funny. That's not necessarily truck related. So uh, let's get into uh, Becoming a Cowboy by Cameron Hogate. Gather around everyone and let me tell you a story about cowboys. And in particular, the one time I was almost arrested for impersonating a cowboy. Now let me clarify, contrary to what some may believe, given my extensive background in dairy farming, I never have been, nor wanted to be, nor have any intentions of being a cowboy, for multiple reasons. The one being that while I like horses a lot, they scare the air-loving crap out of me. But to a lesser degree, and more importantly to the story, I don't care for cowboys' clothes, or men's western wear in general. I find them ghastly, uncomfortable, and all around a nuisance to my life. I one time had a pair of George Strait cut Wranglers. It was a, <laughs> and on a, was fit in high school, but isn't now because I'm a fat truck driver like me. Um, they basically look like I was wearing a very, very tight yoga pants, but without the flexibility or the making of my butt to look fantastic. Alas, this last summer, we went to cowboy country, i.e. Montana. And we went to a wedding on a ranch, so naturally, a man's got to wear his Ariat jeans, his square-toed boots, and his pearl snap shirt. Also, my wife, while browsing an antique shop, found a very nice 
and also a very fragile cowgirl hat for herself. Note that it is substantially too big for my head. We will get to this later, but for now, know that I prefer trucker hats exclusively. All fine and dandy, right? Wrong. You see, about eight months prior, I had chopped off slash crushed a lot of my toes, and honestly, my foot has never been the same since. It tends to swell really bad when I sit for long periods of time or when my shoes are too tight, doubly if both are present at the same time. Now note that we live in Alaska, which is like an actual billion miles away from literally everywhere, Montana included. So anytime we want to go somewhere, I have to fly, which as you know, means hours and hours of flying, layovers, walking across airports, etc., etc. So more to the story. I have basically one nice set of clothes, which is Ariat jeans, square-toed cowboy boots, and a pearl snap shirt. And all the above articles shrink a little more every year when I don them for my annual dress-up. The biggest issue being that the boots take the force of five power lifters to get them on and about, <laughs> about a 26-ton crane to get them off. Anyway, so we go to the wedding and we had just the time. Music, dancing, and all the things you'd expect from a cowboy wedding. It was great. But I noticed toward the end of the night that my affected boot was getting very tight inside my boot. Inside, sorry, my affected foot was getting very tight inside my boot. No issue at the moment, but I took them off for the drive home. The issue is that we left the next day and the swelling hadn't reduced at this point. And here's where things be to began to take a downward spiral towards yours truly, resembling someone who knows nothing about how to dress like a cowboy dressing like a cowboy. You see, my wife was continuing on a different trip, and I was headed home, taking some of her belongings home with me, which meant fuller bags. As we began packing, I came to the realization that neither of, neither of us had a good way to pack my wife's nice and fragile and too big for my head cowgirl hat. No, I would have to wear it. Oh, goody. Also, what wouldn't fit in my way too, my way too, is my way too tight cowboy boots. And also, my Ariat jeans and Pearl Snap were the only sort of, sort of clean clothes that I had. So this will suck, I say to myself. Now that I'm concerned enough about my man, not that I'm concerned enough about my manhood that I couldn't, I couldn't effing rock a cowgirl hat, but the more important thing was that I could barely squeeze my foot into the boot, and being that it was swollen. And at this point, I assumed it was the worst it could be, but I was wrong. Slightly more context to the rest of the story. One, I have a bad habit of not eating for extended periods of time, often up to 30 hours straight. I don't know why, I just do. I had at this point never actually drank alcohol on an airplane, so I was not aware that you can get surprisingly drunk, drunk on a surprisingly low amount of alcohol when in the air, also when you haven't eaten in a long time. Three, I get bloody noses every single day made worse by alcohol and not eating. So fast forward to being on the plane. I'm in the window seat at the very front of the main cabin, note for later. About an hour into the air, my foot is starting to swell a bit worse. The people next to me are being general menaces to society, but particularly to me. And Kaylee's, his wife's, too big for my head cowgirl hat is pissing me off and it keeps falling down. Anyway, the stewardess comes comes around asking if we want anything to drink. I say, yes, ma'am, give me a whiskey. And my bane to my existence seat companions also had one or three or 10. So now we've been in the air for about three hours and the alcohol is kicking in. I may or may not have had more than one, which somehow made my foot swelling worse. So I decided to take my boots off. We still had another 45 minutes to go on the flight. So I thought, no big deal. Well, it took me 15 minutes of pain, agony, and heartache to get my boot off, being that it was so swollen. And I'm in an effing airplane seat, so I don't exactly have a lot of room to work with here. During the struggle, my nose decides to let loose, with a mother of all bleeds. It was gushing. Nothing pinching your nose will fix. In fact, I'm convinced I nearly needed a surgeon and about four quarts of blood to transplant just to not basically die of blood loss. 
My Sikh companions, who had spent the last two hours playing 20 rounds of Jose Cuervo, had passed out, fallen asleep, hunched over, completely blocking the path to the bathroom. We're beginning to descend. So even though I hit the button to call the flight attendant in hopes that someone can bring napkins, a towel, or maybe even a bucket to contain the flood that was pouring from my nostrils, it was to no avail. So I wait. Fast forward to landing. I made a half-hearted attempt to put my boot back on. It was not going to have it, so I gave up. I'm covered in blood, dizzy, half drunk with one boot on, and the only thought I had was, to hell with this, get me off this damn plane. But not so fast. So I got out of my, so I got out of my seat, finally, grabbing my boot, throwing on the too big cowgirl hat, and snatching my bag, all while holding my nose. I was the first one in line to get off the plane. Then the flight attendant stops me. Sir, you need to put your shoes on before exiting the plane. WTF, I thought. I kept my composure and I tried to explain the situation and she wasn't having it. And then the pilot comes out. Sir, put on your shoes. Damn it. So I set my bag down, I bent over, and my hat falls off. I let go of my nose and it starts gushing all over again with all the rage and fury of Niagara Falls. And I managed to get my boot, my foot about a third of the way into the boot. Sorry, a third of the way into my now way too tight cowboy boots. This must have taken me a few minutes as I stand back up to regain my bearings and see that literally the entire plane load of people are all standing, staring at me, waiting me for minute, <laughs> waiting for me to finish blocking the aisle so they can exit. And I panicked. <laughs> Now I started tugging and stomping and kicking and pushing pushing in any way imaginable to get my boot back on. Oh well, some some angry, angry old dudes start talking about how I'm basically ruining their lives by making them wait. So here I am looking like a drunk, mildly homosexual cowboy who, <laughs> who had just butchered a hog with my bare hands while dressing in my Sunday best, doing some mix of the one-legged boot scoot and the hillbilly stomp in the middle of the plane with roughly 5,000 people waiting for me to finish my antics and the attendants call for security to escort me off the plane. Thankfully, about the time security arrives, I managed to somehow squeeze my now 17, my now size 17 foot in my size 12 boots, gather my things, put my too big cowgirl hat back on, wipe some blood off my face, and my way, make my way back to the truck in the parking lot. Crisis averted. Sort of. But safe to say, my cowboy days are over. I'll stick to logger boots and Levi's and trucker hats from here on out. <laughs> uh, the amazing thing is uh, with this guy that uh, that all that probably actually happened. Like I actually, I can I can picture all of it. So, um, hope you guys appreciated the story. Um, that's all I have for this Thursday. Tomorrow you can tune back in, and we will be talking about diesel stuff again. Um, also, I'm noticing if you're watching this on YouTube, it's a uh, the lighting's kind of weird. It's like super washed out. Anyway, appreciate you guys listening. Um, if you want me to keep this up, let me know. I, I like the only reason that this show exists is to be useful. If you don't find it useful, then I will stop doing it. So uh, let me know in the comments what it is that you would like. Uh, one one note that I will make diesel related. Um, you know, a lot of you guys are leaving comments or sending us emails um, saying like, we'll cover this topic or cover that topic. Um, what I can say is like saying like, talk about like compound turbos or talk about um, like, like, a, like a broad, it's a very broad subject. Uh, it's, it's really difficult to break a broad subject down into something that's useful in like 20 minutes uh, or even an hour. So um, all I would ask is if you have a request for um, something you want covered, um, maybe be like specific, like very specific about what it is that you're that you're asking. It makes it a lot easier to incorporate that into a show. But anyway, thanks for listening. Let me know how, what you think about this. Um, and we will talk to you guys tomorrow more about 7-3 stuff.